We're going on the phone. All praise is always to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We are New Wine Congregation of Israel. We represent the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai, who they actually call Jesus Christ. Um, to wake up so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You know, street ministry, you know what I'm saying? Out here, as the uh, Lord prescribed in the Bible in Matthew 22 and 9, to go out to the highways and byways and compel His people to come in. You know, I just want to touch a little bit about something. Can I get Revelation chapter 7? Verse number four, and we're going to read all the way down to nine. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, brothers, you know, the Lord is gathering together his elect in these last days. You know, we want to make sure that we are part of that elect, that number, that 144. Go ahead and uh, read that, brother. So Revelation 7, verse four, down to nine. Uh, yes, sir. It's the book of Revelation, chapter seven, and verse four. Bring it out. And I heard the number of them, which were sealed which were what which were sealed okay and there were still a hundred and forty four thousand of all tribes of the children of israel of who of the children of israel now it's got to possibly everybody in the world of the children of israel the bible says in revelation the same bible the same book that your pastor don't want to read says that the hundred forty four thousand is who of the children of israel read of the tribe of judah were sealed twelve thousand and of the and of the and of the Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Okay. And of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. And of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. And of the ne ne Natalium were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed were sealed twelve thousand. And of the tribe of Simeon were sealed were sealed twelve thousand. And of the tribe of Levi were 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 uh, sealed twelve thousand. And of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. And of the and of the Zebulon were sealed twelve thousand, and of the jo and of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed were sealed twelve thousand. And after this, behold, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, and kindred, and people, and, and and tongues stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and in palms in their hands. That's right. Can I get um Second Ezra, chapter two, verse forty-two? And we like this free stuff because Ezra saw this. He saw this prophecy. And guess what? When it says of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, see, people will like to confuse that and say that that's talking about everybody in this world. No, it's not talking about the so-called white man. It's not talking about the African man. Right. It's not talking about Moab, so-called Chinese. Right. It's not talking about uh, Ishmael. Right. It's saying of the children of Israel, that is the 144,000 chosen men that the Lord chose from the beginning of, uh, of the world. And I'll read 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 42, bro. It's the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 2, and verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people, which I could not number. And they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and they put on immortal, and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then I said unto the angel, What young man is that that crowneth them, and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So guess what? Ezra saw the elect getting crowned because they put off the mortal clothing. They came out of this world and put on the immortal. Yahweh shot. Can I get 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10? And I'm going to get one more precept and I'm going to give it to the brother. Because the Lord's not coming back to save everybody. The Lord is not coming for the so-called white man. The Lord is coming for the children of Israel that scattered among all nations, like it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 5. You know what I'm saying? The Lord's not dealing with everybody, man. I don't know where people keep getting that idea the Lord's dealing with everybody. Yes, sir. Second Peter chapter 1, and verse 10. Wherefore where the, where, where the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. What did, or, what did the Bible just say? Wherefore the... Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. So if you making your calling and election sure, going out to the highway and Bible, you don't need all the precepts. Bring out what you know 
And then guess what? Show the Lord that you, guess what? That you want to make it. Show the Lord that you want to be a part of his kingdom. You know, uh, let me, uh, I ain't going to bring it out, but let me find that scripture that says 2 Timothy. Uh, I ain't going to bring it out, but I'm going to find the scripture real quick. Uh, study to show thyself approved. Yeah, right there. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Basically, study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can I get... Um, Zechariah 13 and 8. This is my closing precept. Because guess what? Not everybody going to make it. I just sent the brother uh, a chart that says uh, like one out of three is going to get it. Not everybody's trying to make their call on the election shirt. Not everybody's trying to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody actually is trying to keep these commandments. A lot of people lost faith a long time ago. Oh, Jesus been saying he come back. That, my grandma been said that. All right. Make sure my phone comes back. Uh, yeah, read it. Yeah, Zechariah, Zechariah 13. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third through part through the fire. That's right. And will frame them as silver is refrained, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my God. So the Lord is not coming back to save everybody. Like how he did in ancient Egypt, how he brought all Israel out. No, two parts of Israel got to go. Because as you see, not all of our people was wicked, but all of us had to go into slavery. Just like today. There's only a, a certain people that the Lord's waking up. You know, the Lord blinded them. What is that, Matthew 13? The rest were blind. Because it's given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord's not dealing with somebody that wants to, guess what, uh, have their pants off their behind. You know? But I want to give all glory and honor to you. How about Shimei Shai? And bring up the next brother, um, Mighty Speaker. Hey, praise to the Most High God, Yahweh. By Shim, Yahweh Shai. We're going to come with a short, short lesson. You know how the Lord's going to destroy this place, man. The Lord is going to destroy this place called Babylon the Great. We're going to start off in the book of, we're going to get what we just left off at. That was my precept. Oh, Zechariah 13, verse 8. Oh, okay. That's the spirit. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Because not everybody going to get this, man. Life is like a parable, man. Not everybody. The Lord didn't want everybody to get it. The Lord created some people to be destroyed, man. That's right. Guess what? When we read Deuteronomy 28, forbade, forbade, for, per, forbade them. That's right. Forbade them about how to show people get here in America through slave ships. You know, it's like a parable. They can't see it. Try to see somebody, uh, Devin, but it says Devin Douglas, but he forgives those who place people in slavery and for genocide, but he forgives those who place people in slavery and for genocide. No, the Lord don't. He don't forgive them, man. That's Obadiah Let's get that right quick. Get that for me right quick. Obadiah That's 15. a good question, brother Dev. You know? Lord ain't forget them, man. The Lord ain't even forget about that. Cause I'm gonna show you in the scripture what the Lord said. It's gonna happen to them, man. Go ahead. Get Obadiah chapter one, verse fifteen. The book of Obadiah, chapter one, verse fifteen. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. He said the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. All the people that put this that did these things to the chosen people of God. Read. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. All the lynching. It shall be done unto thee. The butt breaking. It shall be done unto thee. Not the butt breaking. We ain't doing that to them. But I'm just saying, guess what? They whipped us. Guess what? Guess what? They 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 raped our women. They sold us into slavery. Guess what? They stole from us. What the Lord say? It shall be done unto thee. Hanging us from a tree. It shall be done unto thee. Read. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Everything that they did to the blacks and Spanish in America, it's going to return upon their own head, man. That's thus said the Lord God. Give me Revelation chapter 13, verse 9, man. This also what the Most High God said that was going to happen to them, man. Read. Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity so key word he said if any man have an ear if anybody have understanding to understand this he said he that leadeth into captivity they ass is going into captivity man if you lead a nation of people into slavery you going into slavery that goes to the africans that goes to the arab man that goes to the white man that goes for the chinese man the japanese man they all had the children of israel in bondage man 
And what do they have us in today? The they have us in slavery today. Why? Because 9 out of 10, you went to work today. Right. 9 out of 10, we still paying taxes, man. Right. So guess what? They have us in slavery. That's in the Bible, man. It says if anybody leads a nation of people into slavery, you go into slavery, man. Read that again. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Must go. Uh, might go. Shall go into captivity. The Lord said if you lead a nation of people into slavery, you going into slavery, man. That's thus saith the Lord in the Bible, man. The Lord said you going into slavery, man. Right. And every coon and two thirds. Let's get that right quick. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Well, it is some good white folks. No, it's not. Because guess what? Not all Israel was bad. Not all of us broke the commandments. But guess what? The two thirds broke the commandments. That's why we got sent into slavery on ships, man. And I'm going to show you what the most I said that's going to happen to the two thirds, man. Because two thirds of our people got to go. They ain't going to get it. The Lord don't want them to understand this, man. The Lord don't want them to, to understand. The Lord don't want them to come back to their heritage or their audiences, man. The Lord, in the beginning, Yahweh Shai had been determined who was going to be the elect from the beginning. He chose that before the world began, man. That's right. The elect. The elect man of God that's going to serve him, man. The elect man of God that's going to be on the highway and byway no matter what. The elect man of God that's going to forsake the house, the car, the money, all that stuff. The elect man of God are going to be locked up. They're going to be killed. They're going to be persecuted. Many prophets, you looking at prophets right now, man. We could be the children of the prophets. This could be Brother Paul right here, man. This could be Titus. This could be Yahweh Shai, man. You don't know. That's right. But guess what? Every... Every, it's not everybody's lot to be killed, man. The elect are not going to face death, man. Some of them. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Let's get this. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Because two-thirds of our people got to go, man. Read. Ze Zechariah 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two parts, 66%, if I'm correct, has to go, man. Two-thirds of our people have to go and have to die, man. They have to know death by pain. That's right. Two-thirds, read. But the third shall be left therein. The third is going to make it through. The elect is going to make it through the fire, man. Right? Is that it on that? And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. So we out here saying, guess what, Yahweh is our God. We're proclaiming that he's only the God of the black, Hispanic, and Native American men, man. You know? You know, he's only the God of the black, Hispanic, and Native American. He's not the God of every dang body, man. Because guess what? If he was the God of everybody, why is he only punishing one people? Why is it only one people that stay in the hood as a nation of people? Why is it only one people when they sleep around, they do these things, they get judged with STDs, man? Because we're God's people, man. Are y'all brothers going to be at Eastside Day this weekend? Uh, matter of fact, I didn't know that, man. Matter of fact, um, go underneath the recent, go underneath the recent, um, go underneath the, uh, the recent video and uh not recent yeah recent video go and eat the recent video brother uh devin and 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 put your number text uh text your number underneath there man so we can get in contact with you man you know because we didn't know about that so yeah text your number underneath there man and we're gonna we're gonna get up we're gonna uh get up with you man but hey lord want the lord put in our spirit we're gonna be out there for our people man you know what I'm saying? All praise. But yes, brother, two-thirds got to go. Two-thirds of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans has to go in the lake of fire, man. But we pray, brother, that you wake up. So, brother, you know what I'm saying? If you know that you Israel, you know, if you know that you're Israelite, God's chosen people, right? This is what the Lord requires of you today. Give me Deuteronomy 10, verse 12, man. Go to Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. This is what the Most High God wants you to do, brother, David. Today, right now, as we speak, before you, how was shot what they call Jesus Christ cracked the sky, man? This is what he wants you to do. Read this for him. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord, 
and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So brother, he said, I need you to fear me. I need you to love me. I need you to walk in my ways. And what does that mean? That means keeping the commandments of God in these last days. That means forsaking the world, saying to hell with the world, and I'm going to do what the Most High God tells me to do in this Bible, man. You know? I'm going to do what the Most High God tells me to do in this Bible. That's what the Lord wants you to do, man. And Shalom, brother. Peace be with you, man. We finna get back to it, man. If you got any more questions, comment. And hell, if you, even if you want to, you can com you can comment your number right now. And I'm going to screenshot it and I'm going to text you, man. All right? Give me Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Because the Lord looking down at this wicked kingdom, man. Two-thirds of our people got to go. Y'all got to go, man. Y'all got to go because y'all hindering the elect, man. Y'all hindering us, man. The Lord's showing grace and mercy trying to see if y'all going to repent. But it's already been predestined, man. People that don't want to repent are not going to want to repent. Right? Read. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. God is looking. Yahweh, the most high God, is looking down right now at the sinful kingdom, man. And what is he going to do? And I will destroy it. From off the face of the earth. And he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. How is the Most High God going to destroy this place from off the face of the earth? Through thermal nuclear bombs, man. He's going to destroy this place with thermal nuclear bombs. And everybody that don't want to repent is going to die, man. Everybody that don't want to keep God's laws, so you're going to be in the lake of fire, man. Read on. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, but, saith the Lord. But guess what? He's not gonna utterly destroy all of us, man. He's not gonna kill all of us, man. He's not gonna kill the ones that keep the commandments, man. Bible says, Blessed are they that, that keep his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, roughly paraphrasing. Let's get Malachi 4, verse 1. Lord's gonna knock this place off his damn hinges, man. That's right. You know, you've been to Ut see Cousin House, that door kind of falling off the hinges. The Most High God is going to knock this place. This place is going to burn with ferment heat. That's thermal and nuclear destruction, man. Go ahead, read that. Malachi 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Did you hear that? It said, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. The day that comes that's gonna burn as an oven in the Bible speaks about guess what? Thermal and nuclear bombs. This place is gonna be hit with nukes in World War III, man. Not all of our people are gonna get it, man. That's right. Not all of our people are gonna want to repent. Not all of our people are going to get and know that they Israelites, man. Not everybody's going to want to put that port down, man. So the Lord said, guess what? And all the proud, because that's proud that you want to go against God's commandments. And guess what? He's going to cause a bomb to drop on your head. We pray that we not it down. Give me Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. I mean, 13, verse 17. Because he's coming with that, that, um, with that destruction, man. He's coming with the bombs, man. Read. Isaiah 13, 17, Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver as for gold. They shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young man to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. Keep reading. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as wind. God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So guess what? This place is going to be like that, man. This place is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord's going to destroy this place ultimately. Keep reading. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. This place is not going to be dwelt in no more. America's finished, man. It's already finished, man. The white man talking about something. He ready for Jesus Christ to come back. Why? Because they already know that they came to find. They're getting tired of this place being ruled in wickedness, man. That's right. They're tired of the GMOs, man. They're tired of lying to the people. God shows the people are waking up, man. It's time to wake the hell up, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. It's time to stop being damn niggas. It's time to stop smoking damn blunts. It's time to do what God say do. Give me verse 22. Verse 22. And the wild beast of the of the land, wait, of the islands, it's like it, shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant places, palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So guess what? 
the time of her is coming to an end. And her days are not going to be prolonged no more, man. Her days are not going to be prolonged no more. Why? Because the Lord's speeding this thing up for the elect. The Lord's trying to get us the hell up out of here, man. The Lord's ready to see you niggas burning that lake of fire. Everybody that want to celebrate L.A. Day, want to celebrate all these other days, the Lord got a special place for you, man. Give me Revelation chapter 19. I'm at 9, verse 19. That's why I say, oh, oh, what is that? Second, let woe to them that sin. Woe to them that sin and, and keep not my commandments. That means this death, destruction to you, man. Which one at 9? 9, uh, 9 and 19. The book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse number 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them, they do hurt. You know what that's talking about? That's talking about a bomb. That's talking about a bomb, man. Give me, uh, give me, uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 5, man. And that is going to hurt y'all niggas, man. It's going to ultimately destroy you. It's going to ultimately destroy you, man. Okay, you said Wisdom of Solomon, too? Uh, three words, man. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh. And the souls of the righteous were in the hands of Yahweh. So we're not scared of nothing, man. Go ahead. And there shall no torment touch them. The bombs are not going to hit us, man, because we know that's created the torment day and night, the wicked of our people. Because if you want to live like a damn heathen, the Lord's going to kill you like a damn heathen, man. Until you, guess what, want to repent and keep God's commandments, man. The Lord's going to kill you, man. Right? Give me, uh, give me, uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Because when you do this, guess what, you good, man. Striving to keep God's laws. Because Proverbs 24, verse 16 says, a just man falls seven times. You're going to fall sometimes in this thing, man, but it's up to you to get the hell back up, man. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 6 and 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. It shall be our righteousness that we do what God say do, which is keeping his commandments. And with that, I ought to give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai. You know, everybody that's watching, hey, Shalom. And guess what? Keep God's commandments in these last days so we can get the hell up out of here. We out of here. Call me Israel.